Welcome to You Little Ripper. My guest today is Millie Tapper. She lives and breathes table turners. Actually, I don't think I've ever seen her without a bat in her hand. She's one of the few athletes to compete at Paralympic, Commonwealth and Olympic Games. But what does it take to be a table tennis champion? Let's go find out. Millie Tapper, welcome to You Little Ripper. Thanks for having me, Kurt. What do you love about table tennis? I love that table tennis requires three things. Millie, can I have a look at that? Yeah. <laughs> what do you love about table tennis? I love <laughs> that table tennis requires the speed of a 100 metre sprinter, the poise of a golfer, and the mentality of a chess player. So I guess basically now, how can you not love table tennis? Which one is your natural fit? Are you the speed guy or are you the tactical genius? I'm the grinder. I just love getting, particularly in training, um, getting out onto the court and just grinding away. The hard work, the sweating, the feeling completely buggered at the end of a session. I think that's what I live for in a sense. I love that kind of feeling. And then when I can replicate that out on the competition um, as well, then that's, yeah, that's what I love. Where did you fall in love with table tennis? It probably didn't start until a little bit later on. I was around eight years old and primary school, we got to sort of choose sports on a Friday afternoon, go off site and play. And I played basically every sport that was on offer. Table tennis was the last one that I was going to do. And yeah, I mean, I, I was pretty terrible at it. Couldn't hit the ball, <laughs> didn't know how to hold the bat, but I really enjoyed doing it. And I think it was also, it's a one hand dominant sport. So I think I probably naturally kind of slid into that quite well, um, but I just loved it. And yeah, I just wanted to go back and go again, even though I was no good at it, I, <laughs> I just wanted to keep trying and be better. Where does table tennis go from a, from a hobby to, you know, to make it to a Paralympic Games and almost needs to become part of who you are? Yeah, I think a big sort of kickstart was when I was uh, went and played my first state tournament. So I ended up going to Ballarat, which was about two hours away from my hometown in, of Hamilton. And I ended up leaving there as the under 12 girls singles winner. And I think through the tournament, I'd beaten state representatives and, and obviously came away with the win. And that was that kind of moment walking out with the trophy uh, and my dad and my mum just, you know, completely uh, stoked that I was enjoying myself, loved it and ended up walking away with a win that I pretty much caught the bug from there. And then it wasn't going to be too much longer, maybe two years after I ended up moving away from home into the city, lived with my older, older sister so that I could keep training, going to school and kind of make that kind of improvement. And I think it really came from that tournament that from just being the country girl, playing and having fun to then playing a state tournament and seeing that I was competitive and able to compete, I think that was kind of what triggered something in me and in my parents that I was probably gonna be capable of doing something in table tennis. Do you remember when you first found out that the Paralympics was an option? Yeah, I do. I remember Timmy Matthews coming and sitting with me up in the grandstands at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre, sort of talking me through the, the possibility and the opportunities that Paralympic sport would have. I was probably 15 around that point. Um, so I think being a, a teenager though, and being exposed to the Paralympics, I'd, I'd never really sort of just looked at myself as having a disability and the people around me never treated me like I had a disability. So to be honest, I was pretty hesitant straight up about it. Um, but he was, he was very good in terms of like introducing me into Paralympic sport inside Australia. And then again, he came back a couple of years later and then I played my first international event when I was 19 and absolutely stoked that they stuck with me because um, Paralympics, the whole, uh, I guess the movement of it then changed where my career was going to go and my whole outlook on life too. How did it change that? Uh, well, firstly, I guess I didn't understand that Paralympic sport was something um, and that it was competed in all around the world and it had table tennis involved in it and there were other athletes similar to myself. 
Um, so particularly it came at a really good time for me too when I played my first international tournament because I was 19, had come out of juniors and I was then in, in terms of able-bodied um, competitions. I was in the open category. I was really struggling in terms of, I went from winning every age group in juniors to not winning barely any matches in seniors. Confidence was getting shot. It was getting really difficult. And then seeing Paralympic, uh, the world open up to me in Jordan in particular was my first tournament. And having athletes from all around the world playing table tennis, one arm, one leg, no legs, wheelchairs, but purely playing sport to be the absolute best that they could be with the ability that they had was something um, like incredibly eye-opening and just like it hits differently seeing it. And I think for me, that was then the point where I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to show that I was capable to myself um, and the people around me of what, what I could achieve. And this was gonna be a fantastic sort of catalyst for it. And then in terms of everyday life, after I came home from that tournament, I just had a different perspective on what, how I was gonna go about things and what I wanted to do. And yeah, that was, that was probably it. <laughs> how are you going into what will be your fourth Paralympic Games in Paris in 2012? Uh, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> it's <laughs> I'm, that nervous I'm, yeah, 12 months to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm, about the challenge of trying to qualify. I think that's what's ahead of me at the moment. I think I have learned to fall in love with the, the things that bring success. So doing the, the little things right that at the end that I'm guaranteeing and hoping that that is where they come together and will help me qualify. So, you know, the next 12 months are, are gonna be big and important for me, but I think it's my last hurrah, so really? I'll, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I think I'll, I'll enjoy just this next process that, that's coming, the, the journey that I'll have up until Paris. And if I qualify, that's gonna be an absolutely fantastic finish for me. If I don't qualify, then I'll still be incredibly happy with what I've got to achieve and then cheer on my teammates from Paris. Talk about bigger goals outside of the sport. You've also started uh, developing a clothing brand. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, sure. So uh, it was one of those really bizarre kind of things where I woke up at midnight completely <laughs> awake with this idea in my head that I wanted to start a clothing brand, uh, but I want it to have a purpose and behind it, it's going to raise funds for uh, building accessible playgrounds for, for kids. So I, I still remember waking up typing it all into my phone because I'm like, if I fall asleep again, I'm it's totally going to forget it. So my, my husband copped a message in the morning thinking like, what the hell is she on about? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that, that's been a work in progress about the last 10 months. And yeah, I'm looking forward to trying to get that underway. Uh, but it's really, it's really kicked off with my hometown in Hamilton where the first bit of funding will go towards to build an accessible playground. Awesome, and that's Southwest Society? Southwest Society. <laughs> the question that every You Little Ripper follower or listener would love to ask, do you have any superstitions? Well, I do in fact have a lucky bat. Did you bring it? <laughs> <laughs> it might be the one that's in the ocean. All right, in the absence of the lucky bat, do you have a spare? I do, I do. I've got two, so we're good. All right, let's go have a hit. Mostly it'll be you hitting the ball, and I would say the ball hitting me, <laughs> but let's have a crack. Let's go. What percentage of hard are you going to do? Just so I, I can kind of psych myself up. How about we build our way up? Okay, start. I'll, I'll start it. Start at 50. So, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start at 20. 20. 20. 20. Yeah, all right, yeah. all right, 20. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> we'll build, we'll build, we're getting there. 30. Not bad. Oh, Ooh, I found your weakness. You don't like forehands. <laughs> you found my weaknesses, I don't like to be hit. <laughs> oh, no. There you go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Short lived. <laughs> That's my defensive shot. It's, it's a good defense. I feel like we need to get you two bats, so you got one on each side to. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm so lucky I'm fucked then. <laughs> Let's go for the money maker. <laughs> Oh, that's a good shot. <laughs> so try and. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. All right. I'm Why, ready. Why'd you wheel all the way back there? <laughs> <laughs> I have little <laughs> bruises all over me. All right. All right. You all right. ready? Oh, you yeah, just sneaky sneak. Oh, I won't bail you, but don't hit it off the end of the table. Yeah. Yes. Why'd you do that? <laughs> Why, what are you doing to me? How did you do that? Don't, don't hit it that way. <laughs> right, so you're turning it, and that means that I should adjust against it. Yeah, so if I'm saying don't hit that way, you want to be aiming that way, yeah? <laughs> I just want to get return one. <laughs> oh. Hey. So <laughs> we're so close. All right, I'm going to hit side spin. So it's going to go that way. So you're going to need to aim that way. Hey! I actually meant you to hit it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How hard do you hit it? Just give me a give me a sense of. Uh... Billy Tapper, thanks for coming on you, Little Ripper. Thanks for the lesson. And I know what I was missing. What was that? Your lucky bat. Good luck, Kurt. I think it's gone. I'll get it. <laughs> this could be a long day.